Talking about the breaking news that House Republicans have just passed the only plan in Washington that lifts the debt ceiling, stops wasteful spending and inflation and puts America back on track. He says now Democrats should do their job. Want to bring you out to his remarks following this news just started moments ago. Let's listen in here on Live Now from Fox. The president has ignored every opportunity to communicate after sitting down with him, even though he told the Democratic conference when he was at their retreat that he was going to meet with me. He has not, which is so odd because all the times in the past he argued against people who wouldn't negotiate. As vice president, he put the Biden team together to negotiate on the debt limit. The Democrats have done this every time. When President Trump was in, Nancy Pelosi said, you cannot pass a debt limit without having um, negotiations on spending. This is how it's happened all the time before. The senator at the time, president as Senator Biden, he voted four times raise the debt limit if they did something um, on the fiscal end. Then the four times that he voted against it, he only voted against it based upon thinking the economic changes didn't go far enough. So what's changed, Mr. President? You've gone so far as you won't even negotiate to put America in debt? That's not how the leader of the free world should act. That's not how America wants you to act. You said at the very beginning we had to show you a plan, even though the Democrats have shown no plan. Not only did we show you a plan, we're the only ones to pass a plan. So I think it's up to you now. Whether the economy goes in any trouble, it's you, because the Republicans raised the debt limit. You have not. Neither has Schumer. Yes. Some of the House Freedom Caucus members who voted to support this bill, Ralph Norman, Bob Good, they said that they support it, but if the Senate sends debt back a revised version, they want you to fight and stay in your ground. Exactly can right. You, can you promise them that you won't accept the I don't have version? to. I don't have to promise you. I promised the American public from the very beginning. We promised them that we would end our dependency on China. So not only did we create a select committee on China, we just passed a bill to make America stronger and China weaker. We said we would curve inflation that the Democrats created. How do you do that? Milton Freeman, one of the greatest economists of all time, says inflation is only started through Washington spending. That's what the Democrats did, harmed every single American. We eliminate wasteful Washington spending to curve inflation. We said we would grow the economy to make us energy independent, to actually cut the red tape so we could build things in America again. We passed H.R. 1. We put it in here as well. So we limit the future spending of Washington, the growth. The president makes some audacious, um, crazy comments about it. And all we're saying is we should spend exactly what we spent four months ago. This president wants to spend more money than we spent during COVID. This president thinks, even though he would sign the bill of the pandemic that it's over, that they should keep the billions of dollars sitting out there that has not been spent, that sat there for two years over COVID. You know what? That's not the president's money. That's the American hardworking taxpayer money, and we should pull it back and save them money because it wasn't spent. Speaker McCarthy, yes, this is the first big test, big vote of your speakership. Obviously, you started off in a not ideal way. How far do you think the conference has gotten, and what does today mean? That's your opinion. I, I, I don't think this is the first big significant vote. I think every single week you have raised that same question with me. You, ra you raised the question whether I could even become speaker. We went 15 rounds became speaker. Then you raised the question, could we even pass 87,000 IRS agents and yank them out? And we did it. You raised the question, if we could make the Intel Committee back to the place that it should be, that people couldn't be having relationships with a Chinese spy. We did that. Then you said, could we stand up for the American public that we said in the commitment to America, that we would pass the Parents' Bill of Rights? We passed that. We said when we put forth H.R. 1, that we just stand firm to make our energy independent in America and build our economy. We passed that. We looked and said when we watched Washington, D.C. decriminalize every form of crime, that we stood up the first time in 30 years of Congress to do that. And you all asked me the same question, what's going to happen when the Senate stops it? Well, the Senate didn't stop it, it passed it. What's going to happen when the President said beforehand, why would you even vote on it? Because he wasn't going to sign it. He signed it. When we passed the bill to end the, end the pandemic so we could get back to work again, you said, why even do it? The Senate's not going to take it up. The President said he's going to veto it. It's law today. So every question that you continue to raise, you guys have been wrong. You've underestimated us. But you know the one place that they haven't underestimated? The American public. Why? Because those are the people we were working for, day in and day out. And just as it took me 15 rounds to win speaker, the one thing I have promised the American public, I will never give up on you. So what we did today was raise the debt limit. 
stop the wasteful Washington spending and curve inflation and put us on a path that we can continue to grow. Yes, ma'am. You've said you want to get to the negotiating table, so this is essentially a, an opening offer, but are there any areas that are redlined for you as you potentially Listen, I sat down with the president on February 1st. I want to pass a responsible, sensible debt ceiling that actually curves the growth of government, eliminate the wasteful spending. I told the president we could sit down. No parameters. The only thing I would tell him is no clean debt ceiling is going to pass the House. We can't do that to our children and grandchildren. We're at $31 trillion of debt. The CBO has said that we will pay $10.5 trillion just in interest in the next 10 years. Even though if you look at from 1940 till today, in those 83 years, we've only spent $9 trillion. We spend 17 percent of our taxpayers' revenue that's coming in just on paying interest. That's a waste. We can do better. The president said, well, I'm not going to talk to him until he offers a plan. Not only did we offer a plan, we passed it. So for more than 80 days, he's ignored the problem. Before more than 80 days, he's ignored the American public. He either has to negotiate now or we're the only ones that have raised the debt limit and take our bill. Mr. Speaker, um, so I'm wondering, I'm curious as to your thoughts for a long-term solution to this issue. It seems year after year you all have to continuously raise the debt ceiling. I just spoke with uh, Congressman Tom Cole who suggested reforms to Medicaid and Medicare. Uh, what would you be open to with regards to a long-term solution? I tell you, we just passed a bill that raises the debt limit, stops Washington spending, and that's the best start to start out with. And uh, I watched the president. He's actually hurting Medicare and Social Security. For the first time in a 10-year window in any president's life, this president's going to cut Social Security and Medicare. His extreme liberal positions, this fantasy that you can just print more money and it won't cause damage, that you watch that the CBO for the first time in a 10-year window, that three trust funds will go insolvent. The highway, the, trans, the highway and transportation, Medicare and Social Security, so automatically cuts come to us. This is what this president is doing by ignoring this problem. He is hurting America time and again. Yes. Your members have constituents who aren't affiliated with either party. You think either side negotiating over the debt ceiling is bonkers. It's so dangerous. Can you point that out to me where? Why not negotiate over appropriations or spending that's not okay. to first, the debt ceiling? First, let me take the premise of your question. You say that America doesn't want us to negotiate over the debt ceiling. There's not one poll that shows the majority of Americans has the opinion that you just quoted. So in my belief, you're totally wrong. It doesn't matter who quotes it. And if you sit down and you look, even Democrats on the other side of the aisle last week said the president needs to sit down and negotiate. So again, your question and premise is wrong. More than 70% of Americans thinks we should sit down and negotiate. Every single time you've got a president sitting in office today that believed you needed to negotiate when you did a debt ceiling. You had a former speaker, Nancy Pelosi, said she would not pass a clean debt ceiling without negotiating. Their part was to spend more money. It took us into inflation. So I don't know what the premise of your question, if you ever asked it when the Democrats were on the other side. So the real question you should ask is, why do you change it now? Why would you go against the American public that wants you to negotiate, to curve inflation, to make us less dependent on China? That's your real question, is what it should be. Speaker. Yes. Several of your members have said that this bill is the furthest they're willing to compromise in terms of cuts. Are you confident that you can get the votes to pass a compromised debt ceiling uh, increase with the White House? Not if the president continues to um, not negotiate, but what, I'm, what I know I'm confident in, one party has taken care of the debt ceiling. We have lifted the debt ceiling. So nobody could worry about whether the debt ceiling is going to get lifted. We did it. The Democrats have not. The president wants to make sure the debt ceiling is going to be lifted. Sign this bill. I know other bills that we passed. You say you're going to veto. At the end of the day, you probably end up signing this one as well. Thank you all. Hope you have, have a great you day. Have heard from any Democrats that are concerned about how Biden's acting right now? A lot of them. A lot.